And Casey Clawson presses on as we are now in week five of the 2024 season. We are with the Texas State Bobcats. This is our second year with this program. And Texas State is coming off a tough loss. They lost last week to Texas A&M. Only lost by a touchdown. They uh, kind of got themselves behind and tried to climb back into it at the very end, but just didn't have enough to do it. And so A&M won 34-27. This week, the Bobcats begin Sunbelt Conference play. We'll take on Coastal Carolina, of course. Uh, CCU is a team that Casey Clawson served as the offensive coordinator at for the first two seasons of this dynasty and uh, won the Sunbelt Conference twice with the Chanticleers. So a lot of these names will be players that we recruited while we were there. So this will be kind of an interesting day. Um, it's a big day for the team as Coastal Carolina is probably, um, they're definitely one of the top two or three teams in the Sun Belt. So this is a big challenge. It's an important game when it comes to the Sun Belt uh, Conference Championship race. So uh, that'll kind of make this, um, make this a big day. So let's real quick go look at the top stories. And it was the uh, it was California upending USC with a win over the Trojans as Cal the Bears win 37-24. Once again, Cal uh, starting to make a little noise. Last year they got left out of the college football playoff despite winning the Pac-12. So we'll see if this year they can change that. So we look here uh, this week they play Oregon. Uh, another the next top story, Oregon is ranked number 11. They're three and zero. Cal is 3-0, so this is a big important uh, matchup in the Pac-12 Northern Division, certainly, but in the Pac-12 overall as well. Uh, Texas A&M, who beat us last week, will play Arkansas this week. The Hogs are 3-0, Texas A&M 3-0, so that's a big SEC matchup. LSU all over Mississippi State, winning 49-24 in the conference opener. And uh, it was Florida State winning 49-42 over Georgia Tech. Big win for the Seminoles there. Uh, and Georgia lifts their SEC record up to 1-1 one and one after they lost to South Carolina a couple weeks ago. Uh, this past Saturday, they beat Ole Miss to move to 1-1. One and one. Uh, They had to score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter uh, to come from behind and win it, but they got it done. Uh, so a big win there for the Bulldogs. And the Tar Heels are all geared up to start their conference schedule this week. North Carolina won the national title, of course, a couple years ago. Last year, they... Uh, fell out of the top 25 as I recall I may be wrong on that but they did not have a great season um, hopefully they can get things back uh, on track for at least hopefully in their case uh, I could really care less uh, but they play Syracuse uh, Notre Dame uh, the Fighting Irish look to defend their home turf against Virginia we, we saw Notre Dame really they had a tough start to their season they had just an unbelievable schedule We'll go ahead and look at that. They they played Alabama, then they go to Michigan, and then to Clemson. Those are three of the top programs uh, in college football, certainly in this dynasty. And they took Bama and Clemson to overtime. This past week, they get a win over North Carolina. Again, North Carolina, like we said, they won a national title two years ago. So what a brutal beginning to their, to their season uh, for Notre Dame. This week, they play at home against Virginia, but the Cavaliers are ranked 22nd. Michigan State was in a bowl game last year. So Notre Dame, really tough early schedule. But you know what? You gotta, you, you know, you've got to win those games if you want to, uh, if you want to get, you know, um, get into the college football playoff. And last year they they were the national champion, but uh, they 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 uh, followed that up with three losses to start the 2024 year. So those are your top stories. We'll real quick look at the top 25 polls. Uh, number one is Oklahoma. They beat TCU last week. Alabama. They fell behind seven to nothing to Eastern Michigan, but. Got back on track and won that game. Uh, South Carolina over Louisiana Lafayette, 24-21 last week. Florida beats Tennessee, 38-30. They're number four. Texas A&M, of course, they're winning over us. They're number five. Auburn is number six. Michigan, number seven. Purdue, number eight. Georgia, after that win over Ole Miss, uh, moves up to number nine. Uh, Arkansas is now number 10 after winning at Kentucky. Oregon is number 11. Cal, after their win of the Trojans, is number 12. Penn State is number 13. Miami is number 14. The Hurricanes beat uh, Clemson last week. Big win for Miami. So they actually jump up ahead of Clemson. And the Hurricanes now making a little noise. Uh, we'll see what they can do this year. As you see, their ratings, 99s across the board. So they're a very good team. We'll see if they can turn that into wins. Um, Vanderbilt is number 16. Ohio State, number 17. Washington, number 18. Syracuse uh, is number 19. 
Uh, Notre Dame, number 20. Louisville, 21. Virginia, 22. Minnesota, 23. USC, 24. And Texas State, that's us. We are currently ranked number 25. Quick look at the Heisman watch. We'll see that Nick Jude, the running back from Florida, now leads. Massey drops to second. Uh, Holmes, the running back from Oklahoma, slides up to third. Charles Dunbar, the Alabama quarterback, is fourth. And then Alamo, uh, the quarterback from Purdue, is fifth. So that is your Heisman watch. And we'll go ahead and just start. Uh, we'll, we'll look at recruiting. So, uh, excuse me. Uh, I don't think we can even see the classes yet. Now I can't see the classes. I've not signed anybody yet. It's it's been it's it's going to be a struggle this year with recruiting. I think I think we're going to have to settle for some guys, um, which is is disappointing. I'm in on several players, um, but I'm just not getting as much traction as I would like to on some of them, and I, some of them are some precarious situations. Alan Sanders, um, right now he's you know he's my top quarterback. Uh, whatever prospect uh, we do lead for him but it's only by 490 and I feel like Oklahoma is probably not putting a lot towards him uh, they're the only other school kind of going after him uh, apparently Houston is but th- he's just not interested in Houston so uh, I don't think that Houston's going to really be able to make a play but Oklahoma obviously um, you know you <laughs> any any halfway intelligent person would choose Oklahoma over Texas State. Um, at least, you know, given the current situation. So it's hard for me to imagine that I would actually be able to get him if Oklahoma really starts coming after him. But I'm going to keep him on there. Uh, I do need a quarterback. It's not a desperate need, but I like I like signing a, at least one quarterback with every class. Um, so hopefully we can get him locked up. Simmons is a guy who... Um, we're gaining on with LSU. Um, I feel like I'll eventually overtake them. Paul Smith, uh, I apparently am the only one going after him. So uh, he's an alignment where we have a pretty drastic need. Jabari Lewis, same deal. I'm gaining on him. I'm still second. Marshall, middle linebacker, I lead on him. Um, he just came in and visited us, and that kind of propelled us to the lead. But this week he goes to Nebraska. So I got to hope that... I got to hope that I can hold the lead. I will. I probably won't be able to hold it. We'll see how that goes. We'll see where we are with Marshall after the visit to Nebraska. It could be that I end up having to drop him. Luckily, I've got a guy here, Brooks um, and Jones, who I, I feel like if I start going after those two guys, I will be able to get them. But Marshall is my number one target. Roden is another guy who he visited this past week. Uh, I'm hoping he, he visits Rice. Um, on down the road so I'm hoping that I can get him signed before he makes those visits to Texas Tech and to Rice Uh, if not again I might be settling as we slide down here so I'm going after a lot of these guys some of them I'm just going to end up having taken off I've not really taken anybody off yet uh Nick Walker is a cornerback I feel good about getting. Um, He's not visited yet, and I still have a decent lead on LSU. Uh, Doug Walton is a guy who I'm way behind on, but I'm gaining. He visits this week. So I'm hoping that I can really close that gap, and then uh, who knows? You know, Maybe I I can just chip away enough and uh, end up getting him signed. Uh, Fontenot is another same situation there. He's a strong safety that I'd really like to get. Ben Moses uh, way out in front on him and Richardson way out in front on him. So secondary and the offensive line are the big needs that I have. It's probably pretty clear from um, my targets. So that's a look at recruiting. Let's talk about our opponent this week. We play against Coastal Carolina. Let's go look at their coach. So their head coach is a guy named Kevin Kane. He's uh, I don't know much about him, but he runs the multiple offense using the Central Michigan playbook. Looks like he's going to run, a li- or sorry, pass just a little more than he's going to run. He does seem to be pretty aggressive, normal no-huddle style. Defensively, he, they run a 4-3, which is good for us. Uh, I like to spread out that 4-3, and then when they go into it, they'll go more into dime sets. So that will open up you know, our run game a little more. So 4-3 works out for us. Uh, not sure if the multiple offense will help us or not. All right, looking at their roster, their quarterback is James Miller. I recruited him. He's a pocket passer, so I know him pretty well. We're not going to have to worry about him taking off running much, um, but he probably has a decent arm. He's got 90 awareness. Um, yeah, 86-81, so not great. Actually, the backup, Peterson, has a better arm, but 
Uh, Miller was be the guy we have to worry about. Running back CJ Beasley, good speed or not great speed, but good overall. Uh, and then his backups have good speed in Connolly and Charles. Uh, then we, for some reason they have a tight end as their fourth string running back, Maldine. So <laughs> maybe we should try to get to their fourth stringer. Fullback is a 65. Wide receivers, uh, 85, 84, 82. So decent depth. Maldine is an 89. McCoy an 80. Um, that's okay. Their tight end, Maldine, is a 90. I knew he'd be good. Weaver's a 78. Left tackle is a 79. Left guard, 84. Center is an 86. Dykes, their right guard is an 85. Right tackle is an 85. So they've got a decent offensive line. Good, not great. Left end, 86. Uh, Will Miller, their right end, is a 93. I'm pretty sure he was a guy I've recruited. Uh, so he could be a problem coming off that left side. Uh, defensive tackles, Livingston is an 87. Then they've got a bunch of defensive ends backing him up. Uh, left outside linebacker is an 88. Middle is an 84. And then the right outside linebacker is an 82. Cornerbacks uh, have good speed. Look at that, 97, 94. Um, and their acceleration is good enough to where they will be able to cover us. Um, now, when you get to the third, and their nickel and dime backs, not so great, although they do still have good speed. Um, but hopefully, you know, their other attributes will uh, hurt them enough to where we can have some success there. Free safety is an 82. Strong safety is an 83. Uh, Der- Dedrick Anderson, their kicker is an 86. And their punter, James Landry, is a 96. So they have a very good punter. Um, looking at their return game, 94, 99. Yeah, they've got a couple good returners. That could be an issue as well. So, uh, Coastal Carolina, good team. This is not going to be a gimme game. Um, for, for our team, none, none of our games will be gimmies. We'll have to execute and play well. So, let's see how this goes. Statistically, um, you know, it's kind of early in the season. We've played different kinds of opponents. But you look, obviously, Coastal Carolina is moving the ball pretty well. They're sixth overall in points. Their offense is in the top 30 overall. Their passing game, again, that's Miller, their starting quarterback, Jays Miller. Uh, 305 a game. They're a top five passing offense. Uh, and they run the ball pretty well enough to balance that offense or that passing offense. Um, and defensively, they can hold their own. They're only allow- only averaging, allowing 18 a game. Uh, you look at us, we're averaging giving up 30. So uh, today will be kind of a day to prove that our defense is capable. And then um, we'll see how the offense does. Obviously, running has been an issue for us this year. Uh, Latin, but we've played three power five teams. So, you know, on the line of scrimmage, we've been at a pretty distinct disadvantage today. It'll be a little more even, but is it even enough for us to kind of raise that average? We'll see visiting prospects. Obviously we've got some, uh, Moses, Walton and Fontenot, three important ones. Uh, there are three secondary players where we have some pretty significant needs. They're asking for some stuff that I don't think we can get four swatted passes and two picks. We usually only get around two or three deflections, and uh, it's it's our only. I don't know that we've had two picks uh, all year, uh, but we look at top players: Bailey, uh, Felder, and Dukes. Of course, our top guys: Bailey and Felder on hot streaks. Apparently, uh, top players for them: you've got Landry, their punter; Miller, their re- defensive end; and Beasley, their running back. Uh, their top players. Look at injuries: we don't have any, but their left tackle Peterson it has a pulled hamstring, so maybe that'll be a. A uh, chance for us to attack them on that side. Here we go in San Marcos, Texas, as Coastal Carolina travels to take on the number 25th ranked Texas State Bobcats. As Casey Clawson tries to keep this program momentum going, they took a tough loss last week against Texas A&M. This week they play host to the team that he used to call plays for, Coastal Carolina. The Chanticleers come in. They have not yet tasted defeat. Their schedule has not been near as difficult as the Bobcats, but they have won every time and the games have not really been that close. Last season when these two teams met in Conway, South Carolina, it was Texas State with a dominant 63-21 victory as uh, last year's uh, Chanticleer Heisman candidate Grayson McCall was injured for that game and Texas State was able to coast to an easy win and then go on to win the Sun Belt Conference. This year, Grayson McCall is gone. Coastal Carolina has replaced him with a man who Casey Clawson recruited to Conway, James Miller, and he hopes to lead the Chanticleers to an upset here in San Marcos as we get ready for this big battle for Sun Belt supremacy here at Bobcat Stadium.
Second play here, Felder, two receivers to each side. He'll take the snap, looks to throw, and he hits James out of the backfield, who breaks a tackle. And James will have 10 yards and the first down. Big play there for Phillip James and the Bobcat offense. Felder on this play has three to his right. He takes the snap. Carolina blisses, but Texas State picks it up. But Felder is off target, so it'll be fourth down, and the Bobcats will have to punt. Here comes James Miller. Last game, obviously a big day. 276 yards, seven touchdowns. So here is Miller again with four wide. He's back to throw. He's in trouble and sacked. Miller is sacked for an eight-yard loss. It'll be third and 15. So Miller here standing in the gun in his own end zone. He's got three receivers and a tight end, one back. He is in his end zone looking to throw across the middle, and he finds no one. So it'll be fourth down. Bobcats defense holds on the first drive. Third and three. Felder hands off to James, who does not get anywhere. He loses two yards. That's going to make it fourth and five. So they're going to let Dukes try a 50-yard field goal here on this fourth down. Kick is up. Oh, and it doinks off the post. No good. So here's Miller, four wide here. He is back to throw. And he throws it complete to Beasley, but Beasley will not be able to get the first down. It'll be fourth down, and they will have to punt. Third and nine for Bobcats here at their own 44. Felder with four wide. He's back to throw. Pocket holds. He throws to his left, and it is complete to Craig Miller for 13 yards and a first down. Felder now into Coastal Carolina territory. He'll take the snap. Throws it across the middle. That's complete to Brandon Burgess for 13 yards, and that'll be a first down. Now at the Coastal Carolina 31 is Texas State. Felder had two backs and three receivers. He throws to his left on the wheel route, and he finds Craig Miller for 15 yards. Craig Miller having a nice little drive here. In this play, Texas State has it first and 10 at the Coastal Carolina 16. Ben Felder back to throw. Blitz coming, but he finds Josh Hall. At the one-yard line, Josh Hall takes it into the end zone. Texas State strikes first. They go up six to nothing here in this big Sun Belt battle. Texas State Demon is doing pretty good. <laughs> they have negative one yards with one sack. Miller here, four receivers again. Throws it long across the middle, and that is complete. And Ricky Whitehead wrestled away from one defender, but is finally brought down. But he picks up 26 yards. Also Carolina here, four wide. Miller is going to throw for the first. He is hit as he throws, and he just chucks it away. It'll be fourth down. Decision time for Coastal Carolina. So here we go. Fourth and one. Miller throws complete, and Whitehead will get off a defender, and he will score. Touchdown, Coastal Carolina. And they're an extra point away from tying this game here in the first quarter, answering right away after that Texas State touchdown. And so here comes Felder back to the line, and he's going to throw. Coastal Carolina blitzes. Oh, and he finds a man. That's Jacob Horn. And there is a flag. But it's roughing the passer, so that'll only add on to that big play from Jacob Horn. First and ten. See if they get the playoff here, and they do not. So it'll be going in. We go into the second quarter, and exciting end to the first quarter as Texas State scores, and then Coastal Carolina has an immediate reply, and Texas State is again on the move now into CCU territory. So Texas State now at the Coastal Carolina 26. Felder. Look at the finish yet another drive. He is across the middle. It's complete. That is Josh Hall for 18 yards. That is first and goal. Big play here for the Bobcats. You see Hall. It's just a simple square route. Wide open. From the six, Texas State looking for a second touchdown here. Felder back to throw. And he finds Jacob Horn. That's a touchdown. That will give Texas State back the lead. It's 13 to seven with the extra point on the way. So 
So on third and 13, Miller has four receivers, two to each side. Makes an adjustment, and now he's back to throw. It's a screen. But no, he's going to throw. He does find a receiver. That's Riley, but Riley will lose four yards. That's another Clawson recruit, Anthony Riley. Riley's got good speed, but here he just couldn't get into the space as the Bobcats were there to bring him down. So here's Felder with four receivers. He'll take the snap. And he's going long. He's got a man. That's Dixon who had to make a diving catch. If he'd have been able to catch it in stride, that would have been six. But he makes the diving catch, gets the first down. Big play there for the Bobcat. Good news for Bailey. He will be back soon. Only just has back spasms. So that's good news for the Texas State defense. Here, Felder looking to build on this lead. Throws to his left. He's got a man. That's Miller. That's a 13-yard reception. It'll be first and 10. Second and goal from the two. Felder. Two tight ends here. And that usually means a run. He hands it off to James, who powers his way in. Works his way through a couple of tackles to get into the end zone. And that will put Texas State up 20-7 to with the extra point coming. As he just pushed back that defender. And here is Miller. Handoff to Beasley. Beasley trying to stiff arm his way through, but he will only get back to the line of scrimmage. Miller again, three receivers to his left. Handoff to Beasley again. This time Beasley gets around the edge and he'll have a first down. Big run there from Beasley. 22 yards on that carry. Second five, Miller trying to get Coastal Carolina back into this game. He is back to throw. Across the middle, he has a man wide open. That's Ike Mays, another Clawson recruit. Second and 12, Miller play action, and he just whips it away, but there is a flag. That'll be roughing the passer. So... Coastal Carolina will have the ball at the 14. Casey Clossett is livid. Miller has three to his right here. He'll take the snap. He's back to throw. Throws to his right. He's got a man. And he's out of bounds. Incomplete. And we're going to look at this one. It was close. My, my initial impression was that was a touchdown. Uh, his foot, I mean, he makes the catch. His foot is on the line. We'll see what they say. Oh, they give him the touchdown. His foot was on the line, though. That feels like I got robbed. The last five drives have been pretty good. Um, missed field goal and three touchdowns. So hopefully Texas State can keep that momentum going. Second down and five here for Felder on the Bobcat offense. He throws to his right. It's complete. That is Jacob Horn for the first down. He gets 13 yards. It'll be first and 10. First and 10 out to 43. We are starting to get closer to the end of the half. Still plenty of time here as James weaves his way through the, the Chanticleer defense and gets 15 yards on that carry. Second and seven. Felder back to throw. And he throws it to his left. He's got Philip James out in the backfield who makes the catch and then gets it upfield for 21 yards. It'll be first and 10 on the catch out of the backfield for the running back. So first and 10 here in the red zone for Texas State. And bubble screen out to, I think that's Burgess. He makes the catch and he'll get 11 yards. It's going to be first and goal. Second and goal at the two. Hand off to James again. He will score. Touchdown, Phillip James. Two yard run there. We'll put the Bobcats up once again by two touchdowns. It'll be 28 14 after the extra point. Miller again with the empty backfield. He looks to throw to his left. It is complete, and that'll be a first down. That's Ricky Whitehead picking up nine yards. And here is Miller. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. It's another screen. Complete, but Beasley drop for a three-yard loss. Coastal Carolina takes a timeout. Second and 13 from the 35, from their own 35, is Coastal Carolina. Miller makes an adjustment, and now he's going to throw. He's in trouble, and he's sacked. They lose seven yards. Texas State takes a timeout. And from the jumbo set, and I don't understand that play call as they tried to throw a pass. It is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. 
So we look at their prolific offense uh, of Texas State, really. 278 yards of offense uh, in the first half here with a little time to go. So here's Felder from the 44. He is back to throw. Throws to his left. It's complete to Miller. That's into Coastal Carolina territory. Out at about the 32. 25-yard catch there for Miller. From the 32, one more play here for Texas State, probably before they have to bring out the kick team. And he gets it to Phillip James out of the backfield. And he'll be dropped, but Texas State gets a timeout. One second to go. And so Dukes to try to make this a three-score lead. The kick is up for the 35-yarder, and it is good. So Texas State goes up 31-14 at the half. That's a three-score lead. Uh, which that could be that's a that could be the difference in the game. You never know how important that field goal could be in a game like this where you've got two prolific offenses. Coastal Carolina comes in. They have the they have the number five ranked passing offense, and they've actually thrown more passing touchdowns than any other team in college football this season. And they're also in the top five in rushing touchdowns. I believe they're fourth. Yeah, fourth in rushing touchdowns. So as good as Texas State's offense has been today and as good as they are, Coastal Carolina is, is not out of this game by any stretch. So getting that field goal right at the end of the half with one second to go uh, might be the might turn out to be the difference as, Coast, as Casey Clawson cheers his team on. So we look at the first half stats. It's obviously kind of one-sided. But uh, Coastal Carolina, I, the big issue is a running game. Right now, C.J. Beasley needs to get loose, and he's had trouble doing that in the first half, and it's really kind of been on him. He's not hit the holes as hard and as quick uh, as he needs to. But Texas State has found a rhythm on offense, and Coastal Carolina right now not showing any signs of stopping them or slowing them down. Uh, if Texas State can continue to play well against that Chanticleer offense, this could be a big first Sun Belt win of the season for the Bobcats. So here's Miller from the gun. He's got three receivers to his left and one to his right. They need 13 yards for the first down. Really, they need 14. Miller moves around the pocket. Oh, he's got a man wide open. And Ricky Whitehead makes the catch and picks up 33 yards. Here's Miller again. He throws to his right this time and is complete. That is, not sure who that is, Maldine, the tight end. Miller with an empty backfield. He takes the snap, throws to his left. Oh, and it's dropped. He had the first down, but dropped it. So here is a field goal attempt. This will be a 46 yarder. The hold is down, the kick is up. And he misses it. It's wide left, it looked like. We'll get a look at it here. Or, sorry, wide right. Pushed it right, so that'll be... Coastal Carolina comes here with three down linemen. And Felder to throw. He's in a little trouble. He's going to take off. And he'll get the first down and then some. He's going to have close to 20. He's got 21 yards on that carry. Big run there from Ben Felder. Clutch. So from the 36 here, as Texas State is looking to pile on to a 17-point lead. They're back to throw. Uh, across the middle, that's Jacob Horn, who will get 12 yards in the first down. Third and two for Texas State here. Felder takes the snap. They're going to throw, and he throws it across the middle to Jacob Horn, who makes the catch. A tough catch there by Horn, but that's what he does. In the old Emory Henry formation here for Felder. He'll take the snap, quick throw out to his right to uh, Burgess, who will put it into the end zone. Texas State now off 37 to 14 with the extra point on the way. Miller on this play has three to his right. He looks to throw to his left, and that was almost intercepted. It's batted away. It'll be fourth down. Look at the game track here. Some of the big plays. There's the play, uh, the touchdown pass to Hall. Uh, there's the one to Jacob Horn and J Horn second. And then the one to Burgess. Third 
Third and six for Felder here. He needs right at midfield for the first down. He's back to throw. Carolina blitzes, which left some space, and Burgess makes the catch over the middle, picks up 12 yards, and a Texas State first down. So here is Texas State at the 33. They send the receiver in motion. Felder to throw. He's going long. He's got a man. That's Chauncey Carter at the one-yard line. 31-yard reception for the running back. He just runs a wheel route after the, the motion. And Felder lays a decent ball out for him to dive and make the catch. Empty backfield here for Texas State. Felder takes the snap. Looks to throw. He's in trouble. Across the middle. It's complete for the touchdown to Toby Siegel, the tight end. Gets into the game. And Texas State now pretty much putting this game away. Pacific Life game summary, right now it's all Texas State. Uh, Coastal Carolina here in the second half has not really been, been able to get much done. Meanwhile, Texas State can't be stopped. Here's Miller, two receivers to each side. He's going to try and run that option, and he is dropped again. Fourth down coming up. Coastal Carolina just has to understand James Miller is not a running quarterback. And here goes... Felder here, first and 10 at about the 46 of Coastal Carolina. Gonna let the clock roll down, but he will run the play. Throws to his left into the flat, and that's James Miller who gets the first down, but there is a flag. Foul. Roughing the passer. That's the end of the third quarter, and Texas State uh, puts a little distance between them and Coastal Carolina in that last quarter, as this game is pretty much all but over. Texas State now are going to try and coast the win as they'll start the Sun Belt season 1-0. and Second seven from the 20. Handoff to James, who gets a big rush there. 12 yards. He'll have a first and goal for Texas State. Second and goal. Texas State comes out and what they consider to be a heavy set. And Felder to throw. He's in some trouble. And he gets away from the sack. Throws the back of the end zone, and he's got Toby Siegel for his second touchdown catch. And Texas State goes over the half-century mark. It'll be 52-14 to 14 after the extra points. We watch Siegel just kind of move from one side of the end zone to the other, and Felder finally finds him for the score. Miller here with an empty backfield. He'll take the snap. Throws across the middle. That's complete to Maldine, who picks up 10 yards, and it'll be a first down. Miller again, back to throw. And throws it complete. That's Anthony Riley. He picks up 12 yards. So Miller still with an empty backfield here. He is going to throw. Across the middle, Maldine couldn't pull it in. He is hit and drops it. It'll be fourth down. Miller, this time four wide, one in the backfield with him. He's still going to throw. He moves to his right. It's complete to Dennis Thompson, but he will be short, and so Texas State will take over. So Burns, this time, three receivers to his right, one to his left. He'll take the snap here, and Carolina blisses, but Burns got it away and gets the first down. He completes that pass. I believe that was that's David Swain. So now from the 45 here is Texas State. Burns drops back, throws across the middle. That's complete to Danny McDowell for 13 yards and a first down. So Burns going to see if the second team can convert this third and nine here. He looks, throws to his left. It's complete. He will be short, though. McDowell gains four yards. That'll make it fourth and four. So Dukes on to attempt a kick here. This will be about a 44-yarder. Hold is down. The kick is up. And he got it. So Texas State now up 55 to 14. Miller back to throw. Throws it to his left, and it's caught by Pierre McCoy. 23 yard reception for the first down. Miller trying to throw, and some not sure what happened there. Might have got tipped, but it is incomplete. So here goes Miller with an empty backfield. And Texas State blitzes, hits him as he tried to throw, and complete, and the Bobcats will take over. 
So here is Burns right about almost at midfield. He's at their own 48. He looks to throw across the middle. That's complete. Nice catch and run there by Burgess. He gets 11 yards. It'll be a first down for Texas State. So Miller here at 38. Handoff again. This is Mitchell who gets loose, breaks a couple tackles, and takes it home. Keith Mitchell with a 39-yard touchdown run. That'll put Texas State over 60. They'll have 61 with the extra point coming. Keith Mitchell just would not be denied. So here comes Coastal Carolina trying to salvage something out of this game. It's just completely gotten... This game at one point was 21-14, to 14, and they've given up 41 unanswered. As we do have a roughing the passer penalty that'll help Coastal Carolina on this drive. So Miller now with uh, the Chanticleer offense at about the 48. He'll fake the handoff, looks to throw, throws across the middle, and it is complete. That's Ike Mays. And here he goes, three receivers to his left. This time Miller's going to throw, and it's intercepted. Picked off. And that is just insult to injury. It's Isaiah, Isaiah Nixon with the interception. And he brings it back about 15, 20 yards before they're able to bring him down. It'll be first and 10 for Texas State. Third and five. Burns takes the snap, hands it off. And that is Mitchell getting the first down on that five-yard run. Second and one here. Burns three receivers to the short side of the field. He'll take the snap, and he looks to throw to his right. It's complete. That is Mitchell. That is a touchdown, and Texas State has 68. And did not mean to rhyme there. Sometimes it just happens organically. And that is the end of the game. Texas State, complete domination. Once again, they hang 60 on the proud Coastal Carolina offense. It's Ben Felder. Career day for him, 37 to 45. He had 394 yards and I think four touchdowns. Just a big win. We'll look at the stats here in a minute, but what a game by Texas State as they now takes they take control of the Sun Belt Conference. This was a big win. These are two teams that feel both feel like they could be competing for the conference title, but Coastal Carolina now really has to go home and regroup, lick their wounds, and try to hope. But they can win out and hope somebody else brings the Bobcats down because they sure couldn't do it today, losing by 55. This game at one point was 21-14, to 14, and then the wheels just absolutely came off of the wagon for Coastal Carolina's Texas State easily wins today, 69-14, to 14, and they have to like their chances for the rest of the season for winning the Sun Belt Conference. We look at the game stats here. Obviously, one-sided uh, first downs. Texas State had 32 first downs. It's unbelievable. 616 yards of offense to only 269 for Coastal Carolina. Uh, look at that. Five yards rushing. Coastal Carolina, were definitely, that's the difference right there. Oh, they, obviously, we outgained them 468 to 264. But the fact that Coastal Carolina just couldn't get any production on the ground is important. And we'll look at that in a second. We'll look at C.J. Beasley's uh, stats. Um, but that's just a, they, they were never going to be able to win this game if they were only going to get five yards rushing. So we look at the rest of the stats. Uh, third down, another big stat. We were 7 of 10, 70%. Uh, Coastal Carolina, meanwhile, was only 21%. We look at the rest of the stats here in the red zone. Coastal Carolina apparently was only down there once. Every time we got down there, we made something happen. Um, we even had a turnover, but by then the game was long since over. But it was still um, just to kind of put an exclamation point on the dominance of our defense today. I, I, I hesitate to say dominance, but when you only give up five yards and 14 points, that's about as close to dominance as you're going to get. Um, looking at the player stats, Look at Felder, of course. Big day, 37 to 45, almost 400 yards. He had five touchdowns, no picks. Uh, did get sacked a couple times because he tried to take off and run, even though that's not really who he is. Uh, even John Burns came in, the backup came in and had a decent day, eight of 10, 74 yards. It's a touchdown. Um, hopefully, he is he'll be able to step in for uh, Felder in the future. 
But then you look at Philip James, 81 yards on 15 carries. We had a good day running the ball. When you, we had over 140 yards. And when, you, when our team can get over 140 yards rushing, that probably means we had a great day offensively. We look at receiving yards. We um, distributed the ball well. You look at the uh, seven, six, five, seven, four. You, you know, we, we threw it to what? Oh, man, I don't even want to, was that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different receivers? Uh, and how about Seagull, the tight end? He barely ever even gets on the field, but today he makes two catches, both two yard touchdowns. Uh, so good, you know, good showing for him. Uh, Mitchell, Horn, Burgess, Hall all had touchdowns. Horn had some tough catches over the middle. Uh, that's, you know, that's just kind of his game. Miller led in yards with 81. Um, yeah, good. I mean, we just we just distributed the ball pretty well today. We'll take that, definitely. Uh, Scott and Charles, they said they gave up sacks, but really it was because Felder tried to run. So look at the defense. Uh, Johnson and Nixon led the team with seven tackles. TFLs, Nixon with five, and Nixon also had that pick. Weber had three TFLs. Johnson had three TFLs. Um, we only had two passes deflected. I think we needed more than that to get those bonus points, so that's, you know, too bad. No fumbles for us, no fumbles recovery, none of these. Uh, kicking uh, Dukes was two of three. Uh, good day for him. He made all nine of his extra points. That's a lot of extra points to be kicking. Dukes also had uh, only had a punt one time for 47 yards, and that was his net, so that'll, uh, that'll help his uh, averages. Uh, not much in kick returns, um, but in punt returns, Bailey 6 for eight, uh, 88 yards and almost 15 yards, so we'll take that decent day. And now let's, I do want to look at Coastal Carolina there. Uh, Miller, not a bad day, right? Like, you look at these numbers, and that, on most days, those numbers are good enough to at least give the team a chance to win. But then you look at Beasley, 10 carries for 11 yards. That's just not going to get it done. Most of the time, too, it was on him. He was just kind of meandering. He was trying to find a, find a gap, and he just hesitated. And so he did not have a very good day running the ball. You know, Pierre McCoy, they gave it to him one time. Uh, a receiver as an option pitch but he had more yards than Beasley um, and then in the receiving game Beasley seven catches for one yard so Beasley they you, know, you can't they were never going to win this game if Beasley was only going to have 12 total yards on 17 touches so that was uh, that was the difference today we'll take this win big win for us good way to start the Sun Belt season we can't assume, though, that they're all going to be this easy. We don't have a good enough roster to be able to just, just you know, run through winning by 50 every week. Um, we're going to struggle. There's going to be some games where Felder's just off target. Receivers are dropping balls. But uh, definitely bodes well for us overall. Um, so this is Ball Force One signing off. Make sure you guys tune in for the next episode.